we'd like to say both hello and welcome to the sound of the start of your weekend, the NTT20 betting show sponsored by Betfair, which involves me. My name's Ali Maxwell and him, him name's George Ellick. Him name. His name is George Ellick. English is hard, isn't it? Mm. When it's your second language. Um, we're going to be making betting picks ahead of the EFL weekend. Not a full slate. What's your first language? It's, it's a sneaky, not full slate. Because uh, of the EFL trophy final. Yes. EFL trophy final means only 10 games in League One for us to look at. Uh, but full slates in the Championship and League Two. Uh, last week, we took on Good Friday. And we had similar weeks in that we both got our naps up. Which is, that's like the first hurdle. Relief. Hit the rest of the hurdles though. No other bets got up. Your next best was Manf Mansfield at Wrexham. They lost 2-0. Mine was Charlton at Exeter. They drew 1-1. Do not watch back Alfie May racing clear in the 96th minute, rounding the goalkeeper and hitting the post. Don't watch that if you're back to Charlton. George Thomason and Kieran Sadlier did not score uh, and neither of our long shots did. Joe Rodon and Joe Taylor both uh, letting us down somewhat. So... You were 0.75 points up on account of your nap having been a 15 to 8 winner. Very nice. And mine was 19 to 20. So overall, I was 1.1 points down. You're right. I'm good, thanks. I'm still wondering what your first language is football. Mm. You know. Oh, yes. But we don't talk about it. Yes, Elvish. George, come on, let's move on. <laughs> I don't like talking about it. I'm going to ask you what your nap is. Bit of backstory. Before we started recording, George said to me, I think you're going to find my nap pretty crazy. And I just had a gut feeling. And I said to him, based on you saying that, I think my nap might be the team playing against your nap. We haven't exchanged naps yet. So this could work brilliantly or terribly. Should be funny either way. George, on three, what is your nap? Three, two, one. Lincoln Reading to beat Lincoln. To beat Reading. Hmm. Interesting. Possibly unprecedented. I think this might be the first time this has ever happened. God, this is exciting. And maybe it signifies a change in direction from both of us. Maybe our paths are moving away from each other. No, that's too hard to think about. George, why are you backing Reading against Lincoln as your best bet? Um, so obviously Lincoln did me very well for a period. I think I was quite quick in seeing what Skibala was doing and was kind of ahead of the market for once. And we got some value I think maybe it's gone too far now. And I personally, well, two things. Number one, I don't think Lincoln are playing or their last couple of performances have been anywhere near as good as they were playing back when they beat Bristol Rovers 5-0, Cambridge 6-0, Barnsley 5-1, even further back than that, you know, against Shrewsbury and Port Vale and Exeter where they kept clean sheets and the opposition didn't really even muster a shot against them. Um, yes, they've won their last two games, but digging down into those games, they were probably second best at home to Leighton Orient, certainly in terms of, of pure chances created. They didn't do what they've been doing so well under, under Skabala and kept the opposition kind of uh, prevented them from creating anything. And it took an injury time winner kind of as a, for a bit of a smash and grab win. And then they went to Carlisle where they won convincingly 3-1. But again, it was the defensive side of things that had me wondering where Carlisle, a team who from an attacking point of view have been okay for the last few weeks, um, were able to create a surprising amount of chances themselves against Lincoln. And Lincoln, again, just fairly clinical in terms of what they did. They go to a Reading side who their home form remains very strong. Like they've only lost two games uh, at home in the league dating back to Christmas or just before Christmas. Those came back to back against Wigan, Wickham and Shrewsbury. They weren't as good as they have been previously at home um, in the 1-0 win over Northampton. Uh, last time they played at home. But generally their home form has just over the season been very good. And I would say at home, they're probably the very worst, a, a kind of mid-table to, to top half team. Uh, and that's been the case for the, for the majority of the season. Crucially here as well, you know, this is a, there's no denying this is a massive game for um, for Lincoln. But this is also a massive game for Reading because Reading are not safe yet. Reading are on 45 points. They are so six points clear of Port Vale, but Port Vale have a game in hand on them. Seven points clear of Cheltenham, but Cheltenham have two games in hand on them. And crucially, this is one of Reading's two remaining home games. And if they're going to be reliant on their home games to get the points needed to ensure that they aren't dragged into, let's say, still being mathematically, there being a chance of them going down on final day, then they're going to have to get something from this game. So I 
I think Reading, and I think we've seen over the course of the season, when you account for the points deductions are better than the league position, obviously anyway, I'd probably argue they're better than their results have suggested they are anyway, over the course of the campaign. And I, I'm just willing to, you know, having got with Lincoln before it, the market was there, I, I don't personally think they should be favourites away from home at Reading. And there's been enough in the last two performances to make me think that this incredible Lincoln run that looked like it was kind of sustainable to start with, I think we might be coming towards the end of it. And that isn't just uh, an Oxford fan praying. <laughs> uh, well, this is fun, isn't it? So I'm backing Lincoln at Reading. And annoyingly, my, my eyes flashed when you said, don't think they should be favourites, because when I made the pick, it was pick and prices. <laughs> uh, 13 to 8 each. Now we're into Reading 2.8, Lincoln 2.45. So uh, that has to be the price for my pick. Uh, it's coming in. 2.8. I thought I was getting 2.7, so I'm delighted. In the last few hours, uh, this has got nicer for you and, and less nice for me. Um, yes, I mean, the thing with Reading is, you are right to point out that you were on the wagon nice and early and you did very well out of them. Sorry, with Lincoln, Lincoln. Uh, rather, uh, at the start of this incredible run of form there's a part of me that thinks their price isn't reflecting that the bookies think that they're amazing and that they've been like massively moved up the ratings that much like i would kind of expect a team who have, who have picked up results better than any other team in the league in this calendar year would would be shorter so like in in terms of the prices that's kind of why i was surprised to see lincoln out at, at what was 13 to 8 it's now now 2.45 you you're right to speak glowingly about reading because there there's a lot that they should be very proud of and a lot that they should take credit for ruben sellers the players the fan base in particular um and they would be what 14th without their deductions but they started slowly so they're they're a good side and yeah clearly that good home record powers the price to an extent they won their last two to nil, uh, as you say, against Northampton and Cambridge. I think they're quite good going forward with uh, Sam Smith, Aziz, Nibs, a wing as well, always a threat from range. Personally, I'm not so sold on their defensive capability and their defensive unit, um, both the unit and the individual. So the, the current back four has been Mola at right back, Dorset at left back, Mbenge and Binden, um, all talented young players to an extent but I'm not convinced about too many of them as, as individual defenders particularly the fullbacks uh, and Joel Pereira in goal has played the last half a dozen games having removed Button from goal and I don't really know enough to know about Joel Pereira as to know whether that's a, a net positive or not uh, getting Button out of goal I don't think is a bad thing put it that way and I just wonder if there are some clues in the last nine as to Reading's level they've won five They've won four and they've lost five of their last nine. And the teams they've beaten are Port Vale, Carlisle, Cambridge and Northampton. And the teams they've lost to are Portsmouth, Derby, Wickham, Bolton and Shrewsbury as well. So it's simplistic, but generally they have beaten the poorer teams and the teams that are below them. And they've lost to the better ones. They've lost to the teams uh, towards the top. And that's how I project Lincoln at the moment. Yes, their performances over Easter weekend weren't amazing, but they still carried on what is amazing momentum in terms of results and executing when they needed to. Uh, five wins in a row, eight wins in their last nine. And then just a, a small thing that caught my eye was a Reading fan on the NTT20 squad just writing after Easter Monday that they looked absolutely exhausted <laughs> after the 5-2 defeat against Bolton. And if that carries over at all, I would worry for Reading because one of the things that has stood out about Lincoln is that physically and fitness-wise, they look unbelievable at the moment they've been relentless recently uh, and in games when they've got ahead recently they've well they've gone on to score five against Barnsley five against Bristol Rovers six against Cambridge I think scubala has got an incredible grip on things and of course Joe Taylor's catching the headlines but I think Sorensen and Hackett Fairchild are doing amazing things from the wing back positions Moylan has added a lot of attacking thrust from the centre of midfield and Ethan Erhahan at the base of midfield has been unbelievable in terms of both breaking up play but also kind of looking after the ball and, and starting attacks so it's one of those funny ones where I don't really disagree necessarily with anything that you've said Lincoln clearly have been running hot and it clearly won't last forever but I still feel good backing them at this price um, and I would like to do so so maybe a betting show first after three or four years longer than that our naps are playing against each other yeah nil nil draw who's made the better case you decide. I might. I should have done some John Herbert just to have that on you. <laughs> um, what's your next best? <clears throat> uh, MK Dons to win to nil at Forest Green at nine to four. Um, yes, 
I was watching on Saturday as Forest Green went to Crew and beat them 3-0, scoring three fairly early goals. Um, I've heard Mike Holden speak quite a lot about uh, Forest Green in the last few weeks and has described them as a very good kind of scoring first team, which I think is a really kind of good way to put it, where I think if Forest Green can create an early chance, get on the score sheet early, then they're going to be very, very comfortable to sit out of possession and try and uh, grab more on the break as their opposition comes comes onto them without really creating too many chances. So it wouldn't be a huge surprise to me if th- their games go one of two ways. Um, but against MK Dons, and I'm aware that MK Dons' defensive record isn't necessarily the best, but they are heavy odds on to win this game. And I, I still just think we've seen enough of um, enough of Forest Green under Cotterill to know that there are going to be games against good sides where they are just going to create absolutely nothing. This landed last week when I put them up um, to uh, Stockport up to Winternil against Forest Green. Stockport only conceded allegedly a shot. We think it may have been zero shots in the game uh, and that was the last time Forest Green played at home. So it, it's a massive shift in price from like the 8-11 to 11 MKR to win the game to the 9-4 to 4 that they are to win to nil. And um, the predominant reason why I think Forest Green is so bad is because they're so poor going forward. So I'm not deterred uh, from midweek. Um you know, there's every chance, I guess, that they execute the plan well again and get ahead early, in which case this is dead before it's even begun. But at 9-4, to four, I'm happy to take the chance. Uh, my next best at this start stage of the season, I'm either on the beach or I'm getting creative. Uh, right. You can decide. Uh, it's a treble uh, and it's at 5.44, uh, so just less than 9-2. to two. Uh, and it includes MK Dons, so that's mm. nice. We're back on the same side. Uh, but starting with Middlesbrough in the Championship, 1.8 at home to beat Swansea. I think that Borough will finish the season strong. Uh, they've won four, drawn two of their last six games, and I think that continues here. Uh, Borough are six points off sixth, and they don't have an easy fixture list. But this weekend in particular, they are at home to Swansea, a game they're expected to win. Preston who are between them and the playoffs are away at Watford. Coventry, who are between them and the playoffs, host Leeds United. And Ipswich, no, and Norwich, <laughs> who are in sixth spot, host Ipswich. So three really tough games for the three teams directly above them. Great chance to add some petrol on the late playoff charge fire for Borough. And I don't think we should be that surprised that they would have a period where they run a little hot or whether they where they start putting it all together. I think there was a period early on in the season where they won five or six in a row as well. Clearly outside of this period and that one, results have been underwhelming. But there have been little clues, a lot in the performance data, of course, to suggest that Borough are, at their core, still a very good championship side, sort of top six-ish. And that it's been in the details, it's been in the execution, and it's been in a lot of injuries this season that they're not currently closer to the top six. But I think they can make a little late run, and I think that can start this weekend at home to a Swansea team where I've not really seen anything to suggest that Swansea are, are any great shakes under Luke Williams. They were uninspiring over Easter weekend. Uh, their only goal that they scored, the equaliser up at Hillsborough, was a, a set piece goal not creating a huge amount from open play, and they've got an issue from set pieces defensively as well. Latilath looking very lively for Borough at the moment. So they're the first leg. The second is Barrow. Uh, My nap last week and similar reasoning, really. Uh, They're 1.73 to beat uh, Swindon at home. And it's the same as what I said last week. In beating Grimsby, they're so strong at home. I have such trust in them um, at Holker Street. Best defensive record at home in League Two. And I believe that they've, they've got enough going forward now with Stockton and Telford and Spence. Whitfield, I think they're more of a threat in their current guys than they have been in previous Pete Wilde Barrow iterations, shall we say. <laughs> but also, this is a lot about Swindon, who I really want to get against. I saw them play on Good Friday against Knotts. I think they've got very little about them as a team, uh, and I don't think their mentality is particularly impressive either. Uh, they are not a strong team physically, but they've lost quite a lot of the technique and the and the possession style that they started the season with so not much of an identity they're not particularly tenacious and I think these are you know tenacity completely underpins everything that Barrow do and I think that they will overrun Swindon here um, Swindon were gifted two free goals by Notts in that 2-1 win but they didn't do a huge amount outside of that 
uh, and they've lost four of the other five that they've played in the league uh, in recent times. I saw the only time that they won and it put me off, Swindon. I want to get <laughs> against them. Uh, and then lastly, MK Dons, for exactly the reasons that you said. I, I think that win at Crew it was m- quite likely to just be lightning in a bottle. Mm. And I don't think it's easy to get two bottles of lightning back to back. So MK... Not these days it's not. Third leg of the treble. It's a Middlesbrough, Barrow, Milton, Keynes, Dons treble at 5.44 with the Betfair Sportsbook. And... Genuine coincidence this. It's also a weekend where the Betfair Sportsbook are offering you a completely free hacker or bet builder on football this weekend. So just like last weekend, uh, this runs from Thursday till Sunday. Opt-in is required to head to the promotions page to do that. Um, And the max bet... The max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds 1.5 or minimum one selection. Eligibility criteria and T's and C's do apply. But a completely free Acker or bet builder uh, on the Betfair Sportsbook this weekend. Who's your goal scorer? Cameron Brannigan. <clears throat> hey, no way. Your favourite Oxford player. At 9-2. <laughs> Um, it's a huge price for um, you know for a team who are near enough even money to win a game. Oxford are at Burton away, and a huge game for both sides. Oxford starting to look more impressive recently. As an Oxford fan, I have to admit I find Brannigan's relentless shooting fairly frustrating. He has had so many shots this season. The last time he didn't have a shot in a game was um, back on the twelfth of December when Oxford went to Reading. He played ninety, didn't have a shot. Since then. Right, he's had at least two shots in every game apart from one. Mm. He had five against Fleetwood last time out, five against Shrewsbury in the time before that. He had seven against Cambridge at home back on Boxing Day. It's it's frustrating for me as someone who likes good shot locations because the majority of them are from range. But coupled to the fact that he, you know, quite clearly he's the player that gets on the ball most for Oxford. He's Oxford's driving force. He's brilliant. There's so many things that aren't just pure goal scoring. But I, I find it very hard to believe that he's not going to be in the situations to, to do it again. He's a penalty taker. He's free kick taker. He shoots from free kicks that are basically corners. Um, he, I, you know, he scored ten goals this season. He scored nine goals last season. He he scores goals consistently, and there's no way in my mind he should be nine to two to score on Saturday if Oxford know enough even money to win. Nice. Uh, I had a look at the number nine for Oxford, Mark Harris. Sparky. He was on my long list. I think he was three to one when it opened. He's now um, shortened up a little bit. Um, I am going back to the game at the Mad Stad. Uh, and I'm going to pick Joe Taylor to score any time for Lincoln <laughs> uh, at 5-2, to two, uh, 3.5 with the Betfair Sportsbook. I'm very aware that on one level, picking the team that's won five games in a row and eight games out of nine and picking their number nine to score are quite uncreative or unimaginative picks. But I personally think that the price for Lincoln to win doesn't reflect how good I think they are versus Reading. And I certainly think that the price for Joe Taylor to score does not reflect the current situation. And that is what it's all about. So Taylor, uh, where to start, really? He has scored nine league goals since the start of February. That's four more than any other League One striker. Uh, Now let's take a look at some anytime prices elsewhere in League One for notable strikers. Mm. Uh, Jamie Reid of Stevenage is 27 for a team that have only scored in two of their last seven league games. Sam Hoskins, 2.88. Uh, Collins and Bodvarsson of Bolton, both 2.88 to score. Alfie May of Charlton, the league's top scorer, 2.4. Colby Bishop of Pompey, 2.1. Joe Taylor, 3.5. Now, that misses out context of those players and the opponents and the match odds, of course it does. But even so, I don't understand why uh, the traders are so reticent to price him up as what I think he is, which is the most dangerous striker in League One and the biggest goal threat in the league right now. So since he joined, 0.48 XG per game. Uh, it's right at the top of the division. It takes over three shots per game. And anyone that has watched Joe Taylor knows that he's a good finisher. So even though he is overperforming his XG, there is something in someone who shows composure under pressure in goal-scoring situations, whether it's the numerous 1v1s that he keeps dinking over the goalkeeper, whether it's poaching, sniffing out little headers, as he has done a couple of times recently as well, whether it's using the the defender to pass it into the far corner with the goalkeeper unsighted, as he did on Easter Monday. Um, He didn't score a hat-trick for me uh, last week, but any time has landed in six of his last nine league games, one brace, one hat-trick in that time. Is he 175-1 to for a hat-trick again? No comment, but yes. Uh, but the pick is Joe Taylor anytime five to two. Long shot. My long shot is Crawley to beat Mansfield at eleven to two. Um, <clears throat> that would spice things up in the League Two automatic promotion battle. It would, yeah. Or, or would it kind of end it? Especially if MK Dons win to nil. It would just be handy. Yeah. Also picked. I don't know that. 
I'm still fully of the belief that Mansfield are their best, the best team in this league. But they, they've got a bit of a, an issue, in terms of getting promoted. Like we were there at the at the League Two playoff final when they were beaten, they were hammered by Port Vale. We saw them last season fall meekly just out of the playoffs. And normally, I would kind of ignore that that type of historical data or the historical happenings results. But when it's the same manager and for the most part the same group of players, question marks have to be asked about their their staying power. Last time out, I tipped them at Wrexham and they were beaten meekly 2-0. The time before that, live on Sky, they drew one all at home with the Colchester side who were fighting relegation. I don't know, there's just something about them that makes me worry that you know that they think they should be just far too short or two on against a Crawley side who come here in the box seat in this manic race for seventh. And for Crawley, they will go there having beaten Newport away 4-0 last time out. They've won three consecutive away games at Harrogate and Tranmere as well. They've scored nine goals in those three games. I think Mansfield are a better side than Crawley, but I think Crawley will go into this thinking, you know, it's, it's a free hit. We've got nothing to lose. And we've shown recently that we can go to, to teams in League Two and we can make ourselves felt. So it's a pure price thing. You know, Mansfield clearly should be the favourites, but I think the 11-2 to about Crawley is, is a touch big. Nice. Nice. Uh, quiz to start my long shot. Oh, God. What do Steve Cook of QPR... Volleys. Rob Dickey of Bristol City, mm. Ryan Porteous of Watford, and Luke O'Nine of Sunderland have in common? The highest XG in the Championship without scoring? No, Steve no, Cook scored yeah, and literally so I, on Monday. I said it, the volley. Yeah. And Rob Dickey scored loads. What position do they all play? Centre back. Yes, they are. That is one thing that they have in common. And another thing that they have in common is that they've all scored against Swansea in Swansea's last seven league games. That's cool. Four big CBs, all scoring against yep. Swans in their last seven. In mm. fact, the last six goals they've conceded in the league have all been from set pieces. This has developed into something of a worry under Luke Williams. They were projecting as a really strong set-piece team uh, previously, but not anymore. Uh, only three teams have conceded more set-piece goals in the league this season. So I'm going back to that Borough game against Swansea that's part of my next best treble. Uh, Matt Clark is the pick of Borough. Half a point on him to score first at 35-1 to one, and half a point on him to score any time at 18-1 to one with the Betfair Sportsbook. Matt Clark has had a shot in each of his last five games per FB ref and had four shots in a game against Blackburn Rovers, who equally are a team that, to me anyway, seem a little bit wobbly from set pieces. So Clark, who was out for so long with such a tough injury, seems to now be like visibly, physically back in business. Mm. And he's throwing himself at every set play. Uh, I happen to think that Borough will, will win this game, have the better of it, and therefore I'm expecting a fair few set piece situations. They've got some good deliverers of those. And I want Matt Clark to head it in at 35 to 1 first, 18 to 1 anytime. Uh, you're right to suggest that, what was it, highest XG without scoring. Clark is not far off the top. Thank you. Um, he's around 1 XG without scoring. Actually, there's loads of people in front of him for that. <laughs> um, but he has taken. All, all the people called Clark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 16 shots total this season after returning from injury, 1.13 per 90. Come on. Matt Clark, 35 to 1 first, half a point, 18 to 1 anytime, half a point. Which trio of games are you adding to a BTTS sixfold? You know, mate. Are you wanting to sell them? Fine. Um, my three, I've spoken about one of them already, um, Burton Oxford. Um, I still kind of think like the underlying numbers around Burton still suggest that they're not quite as useless as their form does. They took the lead against Barnsley. They missed the two best chances in the game before taking the lead against Barnsley. It wouldn't be a massive surprise to me if they were able to trouble the Oxford side, who I think are performing much better. Um, but still, you know, Fleetwood missed a very easy chance at 0-0 against them last time out. Um, Shrewsbury scored against them. Jamie Cumming, the keeper, not having a very impressive loan spell there. Um, so, yeah, I think goals there could be on the, on the horizon. Northampton-Carlisle, this is a game between a side and Carlisle where goals are just flying around at the moment. Yeah. They're scoring lots of goals. They're conceding lots of goals. Up against the Northampton side, who will expect to win this, but also kind of beachy. So this fits the, the normal view. And it's very similar with Accrington Crew. You know, Crew needing to bounce back from that 3-0 defeat. Consistent scorers for the most part. Up against an Accrington side who, who seem to be playing just quite with vibes at the moment, really, uh, with not, not a great deal to play for. So, uh, Northampton, Carlisle, Burton, Oxford, and Accrington crew are my three. 
Uh, my three, one in League One, Bristol Rovers against Bolton. This one's a four to five. I'm Bolton heavy favourites to win this game. And, and as you know, I'm a, I'm a Bolton believer. Um, but as you lined out on the Monday pod, they, they are and have been a bit vulnerable on the road this season. And you've got a Bristol Rovers team that haven't scored in their last five league games. Uh, not an obvious selection for BTTS, yes. But some of it's been... Poor finishing, some of it's been a bit of bad luck, some of it's been good goalkeeping. They've had 19 shots on target in the last five without scoring. Uh, that's not shots total, that's shots on target. So <laughs> I think the luck can change. That They had two terrible games going forward against Derby and against Port Vale. But in the other three, they've looked kind of fine. And I think they've got good enough uh, attacking players to... Well, we know that Chris Martin, for example, who's gone a bit cold, can where well, he's capable of scoring. Uh, Scott Sinclair, Harvey Vale, uh, Evans... Giovanni Brown, you know, come on lads. Um, Bolton will, will rightly try and dominate and, and exert some dominance over a team that seem gone at the game in Bristol Rovers, but I think that BTTS is still a goer. Uh, BTTS, yes, in Morecambe, Doncaster in League Two. And Morecambe have seen BTTS, yes, land in eight of the last nine. Next, BTTS, yes, in Tranmere against Walsall, 1.62. Uh, this was off the back of uh, reading the latest updated Fox Punter XG tables as provided by Mike Hunt, Mike Holden's Fox Hunter <laughs> Ratings Service. That'll be fine. Um, <laughs> and uh, what can you do with those XG tables? Well, you'll see XG for, you'll see XG against, but you can also look at the total XG, so the kind of goal expectancy of their games. And in the last eight games in League Two, uh, Walsall are second in terms of total goal expectancy in League Two, which might surprise some because Walsall don't, they're not often talked of as a, a particularly open side, but they have been recently. And Tramia are eighth there as well. Um, I think that they they see these games as a bit of a free hit and a bit of a Rob Apter farewell tour. So BTTS, yes, in Tramia, Walsall. The sixfold is at 24.84 with the Betfair Sportsbook. Not the chunkiest we've had this season. Uh, two in League One, uh, three in League One rather, Bristol Rovers, Bolton, Northampton, Carlisle and Burton, Oxford, three in League Two, Morecambe, Doncaster, Tranmere, Walsall and Accrington, Crew. George, the sun is peeking the sun through is, the cloud. sun is, is not there. And we always get <clears> thirsty <throat> at the end of a betting show on a Thursday. So recap your selections and then we can go to the pub. Reading 17 to 10 <sighs> and, uh, at home. No, it's actually eight, 18 Update to that. 10, wasn't it? Whatever that Nine is. Nine to five. Nine to five, yeah. Well Nine done. to five, Reading at home to Lincoln is my nap. Easy one, that one. MK to nil <laughs> is my next best at nine to four. Cameron Brannigan to go any time for Oxford. Nine to two is my goal scorer. And Creepy Crawley, 11 to two at Mansfield is my long shot. I don't know if I hate this <clears throat> nap situation or if I love it. All I know is I feel very alive right now. <laughs> my nap is Lincoln to beat Reading at 2.45 with the Betfair Sportsbook. My next best is a treble. Middlesbrough in the Championship, Barrow and Milton Keynes in League Two at 5.44. Uh, my goal scorer is Joe Taylor of Lincoln, 5 to 2 anytime against Reading. And my long shot is Matt Clark of Middlesbrough, big CB. Uh, half a point on the 35 to 1 available for him to score first with the Betfair Sportsbook. And 18 to 1 anytime the BTTS sixfold has three from League One Bristol Rovers, Bolton, Northampton, Carlisle, Burton, Oxford, and three in League Two, Morecambe, Doncaster, Tranmere, Walsall and Accrington against Crew. Thank you to Betfair for sponsoring this podcast. Only, well, two months left of the season, really, but one of them is regular season, and then we've got some big fan plans for the playoffs. We've got some big fans as well. We thank, are you, thank you to you all. Big fans of the playoffs. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. Enjoy your weekend. Go well.